Welcome to the final week of our uh, series on the top eight topics that are on Affair Care. My name is Cindy Taylor, and this podcast is brought to you by Affair Care, which is my website regarding you know how to handle it if your partner is having an affair, how to recover after an affair, how to reconcile your marriage after an affair, just basically how to deal with it and, and what to do. And we've been going over the last several weeks the top eight topics on our site and just going through and discussing what the top eight topics are. And today we are at the conclusion. We have hit our number one topic on our site, which is all the signs that your spouse may be cheating. Uh, just so you know, I will go ahead and include that link in my uh, description on YouTube and on the website on the blog. So if you want to find the article, you can just come and uh, take a look at the article yourself. Uh, today we are uh, concluding the series with the final uh, signs, of all the signs, that your spouse is cheating. We had gone through, um, like I broke it up into categories, and we went through the first six categories last week, and this week we'll be finishing with the last seven categories. And um, also I have, you know, I, I wouldn't say necessarily that a fair care is a business um, because I don't try to make money off of it. I think of it more as a ministry and a way to try to talk with you and uh, help you to deal with um, what's going on. But um, I do keep track of like which things are popular, which pages are being opened a lot, and what people like search for when they're looking for a fair uh, information. And this is by f far, and I'm, when I say by far, I mean this particular topic, the signs that a spouse is cheating, is, you know, out of all the page things we get, probably 80% or better. Um, so people really want to know what, how can I tell if my spouse is cheating or not? And that usually they have that gut feeling. So um, today we're going to uh, finish this uh, this particular topic. And um, I'm going to start with, the, you know, the category number seven, which is that things are just different at home. Now, this uh, particular category, if you will, may sound kind of uh, ambiguous in that, what do you mean things are different at home? But you understand that you're married to your spouse, and when you're married, usually you get um, into certain routines and you sort of get to know them and the way they operate and um, that kind of thing. And in this instance, uh, what I'm talking about is that there are um, things that are, it's like a little voice in your head is saying, something's a little different. That's sort of odd, like that. And so the examples that I gave um, on the on, in the article were, were things like when your spouse is raising this hypothetical question, you know, do you think it's possible to love more than one person at a time? And they're not usually the kind of person that does that kind of like, you know, kind of deep questioning. Um, maybe they just go through, now all of a sudden they're asking questions along that line. And it, it's enough to make your mind kind of go, hmm, what do you mean, all of a sudden? Or um, if they're a person who really basically had no desire to do, you know, housework and laundry, and now they're like really focused on the laundry and making sure that you're not touching their clothes, um, like as if they're trying to hide something or clean something off their clothes. Does that make sense? Uh, when they're a person who, you know, they had, had always said, man, I cannot stand rap music, and all of a sudden, they're really interested in it. Um, now, that one in particular is not necessarily a, I'll, I mean, I'll give you a personal example. I myself like all kinds of, I mean, a huge variety of music. And so, for me, it would be really odd to all of a sudden, I, sometimes music evolves enough that there is a new kind of a style or format, and you go, well, I think I'll check it out and see what I think, you know? That's different. That's just a person who has an interest in music. I'm talking about a person who has said all their life they can't stand country music, and all of a sudden they really are liking a kind of uh, music that they just really disliked before. Um, uh, 
if they seem like they're kind of wandering around the house in a daze and forgetting things that they used to remember, or like as if they're distracted, you you know what I mean? That kind of, it's almost like they're a little bit of a zombie. Usually, some that even if it doesn't mean that they're they're cheating necessarily, it means that something is bothering them or on their mind heavily enough that they're distracted from current, you know, like just the normal things, like they'll set their keys down and then forget where they put them. Um, <clears throat> that usually is at least an indication that something is heavily on their mind and uh, usually other than home and family and, and the things that they're, you know, the day-to-day -day things. So um, if nothing else, you may want to talk to them if you see that. Um, you know, you'll see like a change in the attitude toward people at home. So, for example, maybe they were previously somebody who was pretty much a homebody, family-loving, mommy kind of person. And all of a sudden, they'll act like, um, I want to go out to girls' night out all the time. And I don't care if the kids need me and blow off Girl Scouts all of a sudden. And you know what I mean? That wasn't the way they were. And your little head is going, just something seems different. Um, if... I think you'll understand what I mean. It, and this is a one that's not necessarily always a clue that there's an affair, but it is definitely a clue that there's something sort of bigger and heavier going on that probably needs to be addressed. Um, uh, when, the, you know, when they're sleeping on the sofa at night and for no apparent reason, you know, it's not like you guys had a big fight. Um, or if, you know, you're about ready to go to bed and all of a sudden they pick a fight and you're like, we we're just going to bed. I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm not fighting with you. And all of a sudden, they're trying to sort of pick a fight so they can stamp off in a huff and go sleep on the couch. Do you see what I mean? Um, when they're like really, really asking for your schedule so that... And and there's that little naggly voice in the backyard that's like, why do you need to know where I'm going to be? You know, because part of you kind of will catch on that they're trying to find out when you'll be gone so they can do something. Does that make sense? So um, that's one of the signs. Uh, it is um, uh, when they begin to, you know, another good example, when they begin to change the tone of the way that they address you, where usually they used to be um, kind of, you know, lovey-dovey or cuddly or call you a nice name or treat you relatively well, you know, like because uh, you're married and they love you. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they start... Um, picking at everything, criticizing everything. Um, sometimes that's an attempt to justify the cheating because obviously, you know, they weren't happy with you because you're such a horrible person. So it gives them an excuse to be doing what they're doing because, you know what I mean? The, so all of a sudden they, they won't kiss you, they won't treat you well, they're, it's just different. Things are different around the house. And I, I know that sounds strange, but when it happens, I think you'll recognize it. Um, okay, the next uh, sign or category is, uh, uh, I call it lots and lots of changes. Um, let's say, um, uh, you know, I'll run through you know several examples, but all of a sudden they just change. They're an entirely different person than who they've, like if you've been married 15, 20 years, you sort of know the person, who they are, what they like, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I see this skin in front of me that looks a lot like my spouse, but that's not them in there. <laughs> you you kind of have that feeling. So the changes are things like, okay, so beforehand they used to be a person who, you know, they really didn't like to um, go to the gym very much. They're not a big exerciser or whatever. Maybe they liked playing sports, but you know what I mean? They weren't a big, and now all of a sudden they're going to the gym a lot, and they're, they're working out a lot, really conscious on... Um, the working out and it could be a it could be a clue that they're either trying to lose now again you know be, because somebody loses weight does not necessarily mean that they are cheating by itself uh, especially if the two of you are doing some weight loss or health improvement things on your own together you know what i mean um or well I mean, <laughs> not on your own together but together as a couple um but if all of a sudden they just completely change from being somebody who was you know, more or less inactive to somebody who's constantly, you know, I'm going to the gym, I'm going running, I'm going to... It's like a big change in their personality, and that could be like a little clue, possibly. Uh, or they start buying all new clothes or all new underwear, that kind of thing. Now, suppose prior, you know, they were just wearing, you know, your regular 
cotton whitey tidy type, you know, no biggie. And all of a sudden they're getting silk stuff and you know, red and um, again, it's not necessarily a clue, but if you're, if they're getting it and you're not seeing it and they're not like kind of showing it off for you, then that's the clue. That What, what would you need this uh, sexy underwear for if it's not for me, right? Or likewise, if they were a person, that, like like you can see, you know, you see me almost every day. I have my hair kind of pulled back like this, and I wear a, a t-shirt. I'm pretty much a casual person, and I like casual, comfortable clothes. Even when I dress up, I still will choose things that are um, pretty, fairly simple, and... Um, I don't, I don't like, like a lot of buttons, a lot of ribbons, you know, all that stuff. And I will choose something that's like, like quietly elegant and simple. So if all of a sudden I started wearing, you know, extremely complicated, tight fitting clothes, that would be completely, you know, different than the kind of person I am now. That might be uh, like one of those changes, you know, or if I was preoccupied with my appearance, I, I'm not you know, good, bad, or otherwise, I think I naturally have enough beauty. I don't mess with a lot of makeup. Um, I do on the occasion wear lipstick, mwah, and um, sometimes I'll put on a little mascara or eyeliner if I'm going to go out there, but I don't usually wear a lot of, you know, foundation and that kind of thing. So if all of a sudden I was really preoccupied with my appearance and I was really, like, wearing just like gob of makeup, like a the painted woman kind of person, that would be a complete change of me. So here you go, lots and lots of changes. You know, if um, I say to myself, I, I say to you, I, you know, I'm, I'm going shopping, and I'm going out, and I'm dressed to the nines. Who goes shopping dressed to the nines in, in five-inch heels? You now, I suppose it's conceivable, right? But it's really unlikely. You know, you're, you're going to, um, if, if, if you're hearing those kind of things where, uh, oh, I'm, i I got to run out for five minutes, and three hours later I come back, and all that, you know, I was like completely dressed up. It could be like a little clue that, well, that's odd, right? Or like uh, along the line, same thing with the, the, the appearance is like I suddenly change my hair or I suddenly change my cologne, which again, those are things we somewhat mentioned before, but changing hair could be something like changing the color, uh, going to uh, like, like you can see my hair is somewhat... Um, straight so i'm going to go and get like a perm and have like really curly hair and blonde you know that would be completely not me so um all of a sudden that would be an exchange uh, uh there's a change change changes going on um, another good example is if um suddenly uh, you know again the music thing all or the the types of clothing you know where i i, I whatever i think you kind of get the idea it's just where they completely turn into a different person and this is lots and lots and lots of changes um okay the next little sign or category of signs is the the sign where telephone mannerisms are different and for this area um again people tend to get into routines with the way that they do things so for example right now i have my my cell phone actually sitting on dear hubby's desk but we have a little spot where we set it kind of between us he sets it like on one side of his desk near me and i sit it on one side of my desk near him and either one of us could grab it at any time and either one of us can see it at any time so if all of a sudden i was to start and then my my business phone is is sitting right there you <laughs> can you see it <laughs> i'm kidding um and our home phone is, is sitting um, on your hubby's desk. And again, they're sort of sitting in a spot that it's pretty, like I could just reach it pretty quick if you called right now. So if all of a sudden I started hiding my phone, carrying it around with me, or um, acting a little bit like I was guarding any one of those phones, that it's just, a, you know, the, the mannerisms have changed. And it again, it's not necessarily that one sign all by itself is not necessarily a sign that I am cheating, but it would be a, like if you see several clues piling up and um, you have the gut feeling, you might say, well, maybe I'm denying it. So just bear this in mind. If all of a sudden the ch mannerisms change. Now, um, let's say another telephone mannerism one would be if I was uh, getting calls um, over and over from the same number. And um, you can see that either like on the phone bill or you just happen to see it on the caller ID. The phone, this, 
getting the phone from the, the same number, that's just unusual because usually, let's be honest, you you get a call from your mom, right? You get a call from a client and then you kind of don't hear from them again. It's not like you get tons of calls. Maybe the only one call I might get a lot of it would be from my dear hubby, right? So that would be like a little different. It's a little kept manners that changed. Um, another option would be if you're getting calls like to the home phone, right? And you pick up the phone and it, it's uh, no one, a wrong number, they hang up, that kind of thing. And Or if you say to your spouse, oh, who was that? And they go, oh, wrong number, a lot. And they kind of talked to the person and it was a wrong number, right? Now, I will say this, it's kind of funny. Uh, I myself am the kind of person when somebody calls and it's a wrong number, I'll usually say something to them a little bit, you know, because I'm trying to be polite and I don't usually like to be um, a jerk on the phone, right? So I will say, oh, hey, I'm sorry, that person's not here. And, um, you know, a little bit of a nice back and forth, but it's not a long conversation and it's over, right? So um, also I would say it right in front of dear hubby. So it would be a change of phone mannerisms if I got a call, I walked away from him where he couldn't hear me, and then I came back and he said, oh, who was that? And I said, oh, it was a wrong number. You see what I mean? That's like, well, those don't add up. Um, so, um, when the, f another possible example, if the phone rings and they're pouncing on it, right, and they don't want you to answer, right, um, that could be a change in the manners, unless, of course, they're a person who, like, just totally loves answering the phone, and they always were that way, um, if they, you know, if they're leaving the room and they usually would have talked in front of you, if they're whispering, they're, it's clear they're trying to hide something, so the phone mannerism has changed. Um, and then if they, if you're, if they're on the phone and all, and you come in the room and all of a sudden they kind of gotta go and hang up really quick, that could be a, a, a clue as well. So some little telephone clues there, um, uh, that it's conceivable that your spouse may be cheating. Okay. The next little category, uh, category 10 is, um, automobile related things that change. Something is up. Um. Uh, again, you know, I, I can't say this enough. People tend to set into routines, and we don't have to be stuck in our routines. But you know the, that you know when somebody does a whole bunch of little things different, um, something about them is changing. So, as an example, in the in a car, if you get in the the passenger seat and it's adjusted differently than than you had left it, that is unusual. It usually means somebody has ridden in the passenger seat and um, adjusted it to fit them. Now, it's conceivable, for example, uh, dear hubby and I are quite different in our heights. I am really short, and he's pretty tall. I mean, like an average man tall. So if we get in, we and like I drive, I will pull the seat forward, and then he gets in to drive, he has to put the seat back. But we know, like last time we drove, he drove and I sat in the passenger side, we would know that the seats would be set for that. You know what I mean? So if all of a sudden I knew that I sat in the passenger seat, but it was all the way back, I might kind of wonder, well... Why would that be? Because I sat there last time. See what I mean? Um, or as an example, if they uh, go to work and they're taking the car seat and everything out of the car, um, and there's no necessarily re reason for it. Like, uh, as a young parent, I know I usually, we had one car that was sort of the designated kid car, usually sort of a minivan situation, right? <laughs> and um, that's where the car seat and the kids' toys and things stayed for the most part because transporting car seats back and forth is hard. So if this is the situation and all of a sudden they're taking the, the stuff out of the car, it's like a change in their car, uh, their automobile uh, mannerisms. Um, if they have begun to keep like a little, um, I guess you'd call it like a back, like they have a little mini luggage in their car. Now, as an example, what happens a lot of times, people are going to say, oh, I'm going to the gym, so I'm going to take a gym bag, right? But if they have a gym bag, and in the gym bag is a hidden, uh, another set of clothes, you know, and all the stuff that's um, uh, necessary, I guess you, you kind of understand this one. If it seems like they're stashing clothes in their car so they can do whatever they're going to do and then change and then they're going to quick do their laundry because they don't want you touching their whatever's on their clothes. See what I mean? This is like possibly a clue. On the other hand, it could also be a gym bag where they're going to go to the gym, take a shower afterward, put on some clothing and come home and be somewhat neat. So don't necessarily jump in there, but you'll, I think you'll kind of uh, 
add it with some other ones if they're hiding clothes in their trunk um, that could be a sign um, if if your car has like unexplainable mileage on it or lack of mileage so for example if they said hey I'm going to the conference in Milwaukee right and Milwaukee is 90 miles away but the car doesn't have you know at 90 miles there 90 miles back would be 180 miles and you look on the odometer and, the, and it's gone 50 where'd they go they clearly didn't go 180 miles or likewise, if they say, hey, I'm running down to the Circle K, which is a mile away, and all of a sudden, three hours later, they come back and there's 45 miles on the car, they went somewhere. They didn't go to the Circle K. So, um, you know, it's a, a cha uh, some kind of mannerism change in their car. Um, and, you know, again, it's kind of like if I'm saying, I'm going for gas, I'm going for the Circle K, and they're gone for hours. Um, it has to do with getting in their car and they're going somewhere they're you know using up the gas so something's up okay uh, sign uh, category number 11 is paper trails that that cheating spouses leave and I know this is kind of weird but this is the one that I actually <laughs> I have to be honest I mean I kind of like this one the best because it's um, like hard facts and you don't necessarily have to go and get you know a bunch of like electronic stuff or hire a private detective get your credit card receipts in front of your face. Get your credit card statement in front of your face. Get your bank statement in front of your face and your calendar in front of your face. And then start comparing them. If you find credit card receipts for gifts that you didn't receive or um, items that are not in the house, where'd they go? Okay, especially if they're uh, items like f uh, flowers, jewelry, or you know, seem to be sexy lingerie kind of purchases. They went somewhere and they're not here so that is a uh, paper trail clue um, possibly um, if you see uh, credit card receipts showing purchases in a place that they weren't supposed to be or um, if you don't show credit cards in a place where they were supposed to be you, you kind of get the drift if you look at your calendar and you say they told me they were going to be in I'm going to use Milwaukee again okay uh, they told me they were going to be in Milwaukee on the 11th and the credit card receipts show uh, an ATM withdrawal in Madison on the 11th they weren't in Milwaukee okay that's what I'm talking about kind of if they if if uh, as an example though they say oh they said they were in Milwaukee and you see credit card purchases in Milwaukee or uh, an ATM withdrawal or uh, a debit card withdrawal, that kind of thing, then it seems like the story matches up, right? So that's confirming that they were where they're supposed to be. Okay, if you see, okay, if you see um, ATM withdrawals, you know, they have a date and time stamp uh, from a city where they weren't supposed to be. Uh, you know, cheating costs money. So they have to get money from somewhere. And they, usually they're going to go to an ATM because people don't have cash in their hand anymore. And they want to pay with the cash because that kind of is harder to trace. But you have to get it from an ATM or a bank. So you're going to, that's why you want your bank statement in front of you to see, oh, there was a withdrawal. Now, the withdrawal doesn't always show the city and the state and the date. Um, but you can see that there was a withdrawal on that day. So... Um, that kind of thing. If they um, do some things paper trail wise, like they volunteer, they're going to go, oh, I, I'll go to the post office, and then they rush to check the mail before you get it. Or they're doing, um, in a way, you know what I'm talking about, they're kind of covering up uh, the post office, the, the, the mail. They're trying to get to the mail before you do, probably to grab the, the statements or things or also possibly to get any mail that the other person is sending them or likewise they're trying to send them the other person something so uh, again this is not a definitive one but if you add it up with several other ones uh, where they're acting like they're trying to hide something could be uh, on the paper trail one uh, one of the other little statements you want to get in front of you is the uh, the phone bill because the phone bill is going to have a list of the numbers that came in and the calls that went out and if you have this unusual number and it's uh, recurring over and over and over again or um, maybe uh, or alternatively it's one call but it lasts you know four hours then I'm just gonna say you know no one calls somebody a thousand times but I've seen this over and over again where if you you think something's kind of up you go look at the phone bill <gasps> there's a 
thousand calls to this person and i mean it a thousand i've seen people have a thousand calls and it's crazy so you'll see um look on the phone bill that's a paper trail um uh and then likewise if you start noticing um business travel and the they have a, an expense account for business travel and the expenses that they're deducting uh aren't matching the actual business travel they say they're taking or all of a sudden uh, this again is a situation of changing so for example if it used to be they went on business they would submit kind of some standard expenses and um every time they went the expenses were submitted then that seems like it matches right so what you're looking for would be they said they traveled but there's no expenses or they are submitting expenses but they're they're not really traveling so that means somehow or another they're trying to either be out of they're being away where they say they are or they are looking to get uh to pay for something that they don't want you to see or cover so those are some paper trail um tips that that they might be cheating um, our next uh, category, if you will, category number 12 is uh, sex tip-offs, tip that something is wrong. <clears throat> so, for example, if uh, you're, uh, again, what, what, what you try to do is try to, um, you're looking for the differences and changes in a person where they're sort of sudden and unexplained. Now, if, as an example, you and your spouse were going along and you were like, you're average people, you, you have sex two or three times a week, seems like you both enjoy it. Hubby wants some, wife wants some, everybody's pretty copacetic, right? And you're, you know, maybe it's not every, you know, Wednesday and Saturday, but it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's pretty regular. You've got a, got a groove going, right? And now, um, and there's like not a medical reason. There's not um, that you know of. There's not a, um, a, a big tragedy in the family, that kind of a thing. This can sometimes uh, affect a sex drive. So you don't want, if, as an example, there is a medical issue, then you would take that into consideration that maybe the the sex drive dropped during the chemotherapy, right? Or um, see what I mean? Or let's say there was a, a death in the family during the the grieving process. There could be enough focus on the grief that there's not as much focus on desire for sex. So you take that into consideration. So that's not what I'm talking about here. What I am talking about is the kind of a change where. Um, person is going along they seem to be they like i said you've got your groove and all of a sudden they are have no interest in sex and, and they're making excuses to avoid it um or um on the flip side they were pretty like i love you but they are pretty vanilla people in their um sexual the way that they preferred it and now all of a sudden they're they're thinking of really kinky stuff or um unusual sexual behavior that was just not uh in their usual preferences before and and i don't just mean like because people do try this where they oh let's spice it up and try something different i mean like whoa that's really different you never liked that before that kind of stuff okay um if uh they are <laughs> if they are showing new talent in the bedroom and and here what i'm talking about would be well, as an example uh, the lady who just really did not like doing blowjobs before and kind of seemed like she wasn't very good at it or whatever. And now all of a sudden, she's a pro. W what happened? How, you know, where would a somebody learn that? So, um, they, another possible change might be like, like they used to be really mm -hmm. deeply into kissing and now they avoid it. Or the alternative, they really were, were uh, not that much into kissing and now they're deeply into it and it's like deep french kissing where did that happen how you see what i mean it's a a, a, a a strange change that is seems like um there's nowhere else that you would practice french kissing so it seems like reasonable to me if if somebody said i kind of feel like trying this and i'm not sure if i like it or not but would you be willing to try it with me that's entirely different than somebody who says all of a sudden they have a skill that they just didn't have before. So that would be a clue, a potential clue. Um, when they're sort of giving poor excuses for why they're not in the mood or they're coming up with um, trying to justify not doing it, 
or um, alternatively, if it seems like they are kind of, um, <laughs> how do I say this nicely? They're looking for a reason to, like, I've got to get you into bed today. It could be that they were with their lover earlier, and now they got to kind of cover that by being with you, if that makes any sense. It's kind of, ugh. But anyway, um, if that kind of, you feel that kind of a change, where they used to be, you know, not as much into it, and now they're all of a sudden are crazy into it, um, hypersexual. Um, if they have um, unexplained, like, bruises or scratches on, on their back, that's not, again, not always a clue, but it could be, because where would that come from? Um, it's just, again, I, I think you kind of get the idea that what we're looking at is, did they, did their whole personality and attitude towards sex and sexuality change? Did they gain new skills they didn't have before or want before? That's a, a clue that possibly um, they may be cheating. Okay, the, uh, s we're almost done. Uh, I have, uh, uh, this, this is the last kind of uh, major category, category 13, which would be work-related signs that they might be cheating. Um, and this one, I'm pretty sure you're going to get this pretty quick. Um, if they are, oh, I have to work a lot longer. I have to work longer hours, more overtime, uh, more frequently. Um, you, they could be um, spending, using that excuse to get out of the house to spend time with their other person. Um, especially if you see they are saying they are working a lot of overtime, but it doesn't show up on the pay stub. So keep, uh, keep that balance in mind. Um, if they have changed the established routine for no apparent reason, if they used to be the kind of person who would, you know, they're going to get up at 7, they're going to get dressed, leave the house by 7.30 so they can be to work by 8, and now all of a sudden they're getting up at 5, and then they don't, they used to come home, you know, 5 o'clock they'd close the office, 5.30 they'd be in the door, 6 o'clock they're eating dinner, and now all of a sudden it's 7 or 8 before they're getting home, and there's no real call, there's no, like, hey, I'm, I'm running late, and there's a reasonable reason, right? This would be uh, probably the biggest clue that, um, or at least one of, one of the bigger clues that somebody might be cheating. They're um, and probably or possibly with somebody from work. Um, when they discourage you from calling to work or coming to work, if, if you used to, for example, um, when you were younger, you used to meet for lunch, and now you... On the occasion, you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm going to go and have lunch. And so you call them and say, hey, I'm going to come and have lunch. And they're like, oh, no, 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 I'm in this. And they do that over and over. It's like they don't want you to be seen at work. Or if this, the other person is a person at work, say a secretary or a boss, they don't want you to be there to remind them that they're married and they shouldn't be having an affair. So they are trying to discourage you from being coming and being around. Um, when your spouse is often unavailable when you try to call them at work. Now, this one, I'm going to just say teeters on the verge of, it could have issues because some people in their insecurity will call over to work six times a day. And that is not appropriate because the person, the person at work cannot always just drop everything to answer the call right then and there. And I understand that that's you know, conceivable. So you do need to make sure that you are um, being realistic in the number of times you call. If you call once a day, however, and they're not available, and and you know, like as an example, if they come home and they say, oh, I always have a 9 a.m. quick team meeting, so that's a bad time to call, but why don't you call me around 11 or 1, and then you try one and, and they're there, cool. You see what I'm saying? That part you got to be a little understanding to your spouse and their work things. But by the same token, if they are, if you're calling at different times of the day and they're not available to come to the phone, something might be up. Um, they're not either they're not at work or they're, um, you know, indisposed because they're with their other person. Um, if you leave them a message or text them or whatever, and it takes a long time before you get a return, and there's not. There's not that reasonable reason, such as we were having a long team meeting, and remember I told you about that last week, and you go, oh, yeah, you did. Um, if it takes them a long time to return your calls and a long time to you know text back a message, they could text back really quickly um, in a meeting, you know, then you'd know. So uh, that could be a clue. And again, you want to see if you're getting several clues together, not one, okay? Um, if your spouse is kind of acting like they prefer to attend 
um, their work functions and, and their events and things alone rather than bringing you and they're like discouraging you from attending okay like I'm, talk I'm thinking the Christmas party right or if work is having the happy hour barbecue get together thing and they don't want you to come they're acting like oh no 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 nobody's bringing their spouse don't come that could be a clue that that they're intending to attend that event with their other person um, if they're uh, a traveling kind of person and they all of a sudden have m many more trips business trips and then they refuse to let you you know drive them to the airport pick them up go with them that kind of thing that could be a clue and this um this one it's a little bit hard and again you know you have to use some judgment because um if they are a, a traveling person um that's part of the job i personally feel like traveling kind of professions are really hard on marriage. Anytime people are apart, a the temp, the temp, the loneliness can leave a weakness, but also you're apart from each other, so you're not spending time together, and this is going to decrease the intimacy because you're just not together. But anyway, you you get the drift. If you if the amount of traveling changes, and they're also discouraging you from like driving to the airport and all that kind of thing, then there could be it could be a clue um, that they're up to something. Um, when when you find out like by accident that they took vacation days or or personal days um and they had told you that they were working those days um that could be a clue that they were away um and where were they right um when um when you start noticing that the amount of money being dropped deposited into the uh, the joint account for the house is decreasing. Now, this one is a, tr a tricky one because sometimes people do that just because they want more money. But usually, like uh, couples get into a habit, like I get my paycheck, it's deposited, in the ch it's just you know that uh, deposit that. Uh... And anyway, so there, yeah, <laughs> what is that called? <laughs> that, that that one, that's automatic deposit thing. So anyway, so they're um. They get in that ha well okay so now all of a sudden they have to be using their money to cheat they're they're trying to you know buy things with their lover and take them off to so what they'll start doing is they start gradually oh actually direct deposit now 90 percent and they keep the 10 right oh now direct deposit the 80 oh there it is it's direct deposit anyway <laughs> okay so anyway so they're um and the, the, they'll they'll change that direct deposit amount so you start to notice that the amount being deposited is dropping off a little and they're coming home you know coming home late Where's the money being spent? You know, here you're trying to kind of uh, add two and two and two together, and you'll start to see it, that there's a little bit of a work pattern there. Um, and then the other thing that's kind of work-related is if they're claiming that they're really stressed out at work and really, like, they'll snap at you and they're making excuses to be snappy and angry and then sort of saying it's stress at work, um, when you say something like, well, why are you snapping at me? You know what I mean? And that could be a sign that they're looking for an excuse to you know to rage and justify stomping their feet and heading off to to sleep elsewhere so um kind of it's kind of work related okay and then here we are the the final sign uh sign 14 that um that your spouse may be cheating there are actually uh a couple of things that i call it things you'll hear right and this is because <laughs> There are a couple of things that I am not sure why, but almost every cheating person says these. And it's like there's a script. What's the deal with that? But here are some things you'll probably hear. And if you hear these or a very close derivative, there it's actually a really strong clue that your spouse may be cheating. And the number one one is, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Which I, I hate that. <laughs> what the heck does that mean? You know what? Let, let's not even go there. You, when you hear this, you'll know. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. You well, so what? Are you in love with someone else? Come on, that's crazy. Okay, uh, the, another one that you'll hear that's pretty uh, regular is, uh, "I need some space to figure out my feelings." Baloney. You can figure out your feelings sitting right next to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Nobody need, what they what they're really saying is I need space so that I can go screw somebody else and not have you in the room with me. And as you can see, it makes me a little bit angry. Um, another one that you'll hear is, oh, we're just friends. So they call somebody a thousand times 
in a month and you're just friends with that person? No. It's clearly deeper than friends. You don't call any of your other friends a thousand times. And I don't call any of my friends a thousand times. So clearly, you are not just friends. Um, but I'm just telling you, you will hear that. <laughs> and then the last one um, is pretty pretty regular, but not always. And that one is, you, I need you to respect my privacy. Or something like, along that line. Something like, um, how dare you... Uh, Inter, you know, uh, break my privacy. How dare you, you know, like as if interrupting their privacy is this enormous crime. Com you know, and especially here's what what really gets me. I mean, I'll just be honest. Somehow or another, it's a horrendous marriage-ending crime to not respect their privacy, but committing adultery is okay. Anyway, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I just tell you, I, those are four things that you will hear. When you, if you hear those, then those are extremely strong clues that your spouse may be cheating because for some reason, almost all the cheaters say them. And um, not sure why, but if you hear that, just that, I'm just telling you, that is probably a good chance that your spouse is cheating. So uh, this concludes our uh, top eight topics here in Affair Care. Um, next week, I have to be honest with you, I'm kind of going over in my mind what to do for the months of you know, May and June. I know there's a lot of interest in uh, recovery and recovering after an affair. Uh, and I believe it, it's reconciling is what people really have in mind. So if you have something that you, that like is a topic that you would be really interested in having me write about, I really wish you would let me know. Um, the ways that you could to, could let me know would be to email me at affaircare at gmail.com. Uh, this will go to either myself or, or dear hubby David. Um, or also you can hit the Contact Us page, which is on our um, website, uh, faircare.com. Just hit the Contact Us page. Um, or you can always leave comments. Uh, I read all the comments, so just let us know. Like, I would really be interested in hearing this. You can always also let us know on Twitter or Facebook. Um, the links to those are on our, uh, our website, faircare.com. And just somehow or another let us know what topics you might be interested in having us having me talk about more or let you know about um, if there's a specific question you want me to answer that kind of thing so okay I uh, look forward to seeing you next week and thanks so much hope you have a great week <laughs> bye bye